Okay, all right, guys. Welcome to the video. I hope you all are uh, well. Okay, guys. Say so build video is for Torchlight Free. My first ever Torchlight Free build video, guys. And of course, it's for the sharpshoot class, the pet class of the game, using the Bane Relic. The Bane Relic basically is a load of poison and some sort of spineling. So, if you guys are looking for a full pet build, you come to the right place because this thing is. Uh, it's very, very fun, man. We can summon goblins, uh, a wolf, man, a legion of gobos, uh, spiders, a giant spider in the uh, queen as well. It's, uh, yeah, it's very, very cool, man. And, uh, yeah, guys, an endgame build. I'm already pushing up to, where am I now? I'm up to 210 right now. I think the cap is 252, I think. So, yeah, I'm, I'm currently building my way up to the end game right now. But, uh, yeah, it's very, very fun. So, Riffle, guys, the damage is 50% pets and 50% range capabilities, so target strikes, things like that, okay? So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, go, guys. So, first thing you want to do, with gearing, minimum, okay, minimum for this build, you must have the Musketeer Cavalier Hat and the chest plate. These are the two most important pieces on this suit and you must uh, must uh, basically have three piece bonus as well now right now i've got the boots on which i don't really want okay i actually want to wear these gloves but unfortunately these gloves don't have a correct role okay but basically if, if you wear these gloves guys uh you basically summon two herman spirits two ghost archers while you hit your uh, arachnid sword your charge relic ability and uh yeah, you get these ghost archers come out and they just wreck the screen. They're really, really good. But fortunately, unfortunately, I haven't got a glove yet with Mismo duration on it, which is really, really annoying. So, uh, yeah, I'm still farming. But, but minimum, guys, you want Musketeer, Cavalier hat, and chest plate, okay? Because once you've got three piece bonus, you get plus two to all your precision skills, which is huge. And same for the chest plate, you get plus one to all your adventurous skills as well. This frees up tons and tons of points on your character. You can boost all your other skills right up to the top and make your pets and everything just absolutely wreck the screen. It's very, very fun. Well, guys, so uh, the most important gear rolls you can have on your character is Misma Duration. Okay, you must have Misma Duration on your gear because uh, without it, you, you won't have no damage reduction, no damage for your pets either or anything like that. Okay, so it's super important. Okay, now for those that don't know, Misma Duration, I've got currently got my boots and my gloves. You can put it anywhere you want, but that's where I've got it currently. That's why I'm wearing these items. So, um, Misma is a skill on the Bane Relic, which is this one here. Okay. Release toxic vapors of Bane, surround you in a cloud of poison mist, lasting until the Relic energy is depleted. Now, because you've got Misma Duration, you can't actually run out of Relic energy, okay, while you're in combat. But as long as you're in combat, by shooting enemies, okay, whatever, using your main skills, you'll never ever run out of power. You can keep this buff up forever. That's why you want to have two Mizma rolls. Uh, the cloud deals 160 weapon damage as poison per second as well if you're close by to enemies, which is always nice. Uh, while the buff is active, you and your nearby allies deal 25% more damage and your defenses are increased by 50%. Now, when you're pushing the game, especially, this keeps you alive, okay? This keeps you alive, so it's super important when you're pushing end game. You have two rolls of Mizuno Duration on your gear. Otherwise, you'll just die all the time. All the time. Okay, guys. Tier bonuses. Uh, summon a spider in every second while Mizuno is active. And we're currently at max of six. You're spawning spiders all the time, which is great. Tier 2 bonus. Uh, minus 25 Relic Energy Cost for Mizuno. Great. And Tier 3. Uh, minions deal 100% more damage while Mizuno is active. So, basically, if this isn't on, your pet build isn't going to be hitting that hard. And that's why you want two duration rolls for Mizma on your character. Now I can quickly show this in action now. So you can see here I've got almost just over half a bar of, uh, of Relic Energy, which you gain by just doing damage, basically. My target dummy is here. It's just kind of invisible right now. I don't know why. But um, if we turn on Mizma now, so right now the buff is on, and you can see in a second that the buff is going to drop down in a second. Because I'm starting to summon um, spiders, it's going to go up for a little bit. And it'll start dropping in a second. Now you can see now that it's now dropping. Obviously once it drops to the bottom, it's gonna run out okay but now if i do, do dps basically on my training dumb now or basically a monster in the game you can see that my energy is actually going back up very very slowly see and obviously you're gonna be in combat all the time like they're shooting like crazy and your power is going to keep, keep going back up all the time then it works a lot better once you're actually fighting monsters but i've got some footage coming up in a sec and that's how you can basically keep misma up all the time in the game and it makes all this legion of pets this is just a few up all the time it's very very cool <laughs> that's very very cool right so guys so yeah ideally you want to have these gloves on if you can but like i said i might i can't wear them right now because i need the misrituation on gear hopefully i can get these gloves here with misrituation soon so i can complete the build to get those archers man on top as well Brilliant. So yeah guys remember musculeer couple of hair and chest minimum okay but you must wear another uh, musketeer piece to achieve free set bonus okay it's very very important 
Nice. But then, okay, guys, the rest of the gear, just uh, highest, deepest weapon you can possibly get your hands on. This one I'm currently using at the moment. I do prefer one with, like, a, a burn or a DOT on that one, uh, but it's still a very good gun. It's the best weapon for raw damage I've found in the game so far, which is good. For shoulders, guys, you can pretty much use anything you like. I'm just using these would be shoulders just because uh, they've rolled really well, okay? Because mostly because it's basically more target strikes. Target strikes is your main archery skill in this build, okay? So right now I've got target strikes here on my shoulders. And my legs okay target stripes is this skill here and it does an absolute ton of damage it does so much damage you just sort of rapid fire rapid fire rapid fire rapid fire that you could just hit reload boom get all your ammo back and start shooting again okay so you can just basically just dump dps on targets super super quick so yeah, definitely stack uh, target strikes damage on your gear. It's very, very nice. Also, guys, with resistances, preferably uh, always stack base defense. Okay, base defense is extremely important. And you can see here, I've mostly got my defense in, in a fairly good margin right now. My, my poison's a little weak right now, but get base defense up. Then with these extra enchantment slots you've got on your gear here and here and here, they can get, you know, just stack whatever extra resistance you need on your character. Okay, so I hope you get some good stuff. Like I, on these legs here, I've got tons of fire resistance on this one right now because I kept on dying to a particular boss, so I put some fire resist. But try not even out your defenses, okay? Don't have no uh, holes in your suit because uh, one minute you'd be fine, then the next minute you go to a mission and bang, and you get one shot. You're like, whoa, what happened? Why did I die? Probably because you've got a resistance hole in your suit, so make sure you fill it up. But don't ignore base defense because it's very, very important. Nice. So, uh, yeah, guys, pet items, uh, Dryad's neckband. Uh, on pet hits, recover 3% health for both for you and your pet. This is absolutely brilliant. I don't know if I haven't actually found a level 60 version of this yet, but it's fine. So, constant healing all the time. This is when you're staying off your health. Uh, token invigoration. On pet hits, a 10% chance for a fresh cooldowns of your pet's active skills. This thing is awesome man because uh all your pet skills are refreshing super quick so the heals going off the damage buff etc etc the damage reduction buff so highly suggest guys as soon as you get token invigoration put it on your pet it's great and the last one guys is the ancient ones token pet occasionally summons the spirits of biju and simon so basically a dog and a cat in that to fight in combat for 30 seconds are even more pets on top so this is the particular pet items that i use for my particular build right now here under bane sharpshooter pet summoner build man it's very very nice sweet okay so uh also guys there is a few other gearing options you can do as well if you want you can actually go bone razor main hand okay let me take off this op gun you can go bone razor main hand and actually go sword and board now it doesn't matter if you go sword and board to add axe whatever okay you can still cast all your skills like normal if you're wearing sword of board like this it does look cool doesn't it so you can still shoot your ammo and all that shoot your bow and what skills and that sort of stuff and it still work absolutely fine it looks really cool as well but what's really nice about this set here is cast your reckoning assault summon three skeletal warriors for 20 seconds then if you had got the shield on Cast Rank Assault summon three skeletal knights for 20 seconds, and then with Bone Rays equipped, also summon four skeletal archers for 20 seconds as well. <laughs> so we, I've actually got the Gretic Energy charged up right now, so we hit this now. Watch this. So that's my Spider Queen for my spec bonus, and uh, we've got this horde of undead as well on top. <laughs> How cool is this? Look. Hey! They run around for a while, sort of thing, for 20 seconds, just wrecking the screen. They do a lot of damage as well. A lot of damage. So if you want to, you can go that way. And obviously, using a shield. You know, gonna be much, much tougher to kill. Okay, personally, I like the higher DPS of a two hander, but I just want to chat that in there for you guys. If you do want to go, maybe playing hardcore, for instance, you know, you can go for a more blocking option, sort of like thing like that. But that's another option there for some more pets. There's another option as well, actually. There's a new legendary in the game called, uh, where is it? It's a new sword, big, big sword. There it is, this thing here, Sword of the uh, Lost Legion. Now, this thing, unfortunately, it's an active skill. Okay, it's an active skill. So, uh, let me quickly show you. We pop this on. You know, feel free to experiment with the other skills, guys, and take what in and out. Pretty much, you can, if you want to, you can take sacrifice skills out of this build. It's a damage damage thing. But what you can do, because this sword has um, a special ability, if you go to your skill tab, left click here, and you see here, where, where is it? Uh, Call of the Legion. This is actually from the sword here. Conjure the Lost Legion, a battalion of skeletons, battle of your foes for 20 seconds. Skip skeletons deal 100% weapon damage for each attack. Unfortunately, it's on a 60 second cooldown, it only lasts 20 seconds. But if you want, you can have even more pets from here as well. And you can see I've got another one here from my shoulder plate as well, guys. You know, some of the hound, which is not too bad. So, personally, I've these at the moment, these skills, they are really nice when you use them, but the cooldown duration is too long. It's too long, man. But, I tell you what, 
this particular one here, Call the Legion, does a lot of damage, man. Look at this. This is these dudes here, man. Look, look how many dudes we've got. I'm like, <laughs> Archer's skeleton. It's very similar to the Bone Razor one we just did there. So you could actually run Bone Razor and that sword, guys, if you wanted to, because you could just put the other ones into Legend Arm if you wanted to. And uh, have a huge cooldown for a mass summon of undead as well. So I just want to put one with the pet options there as possible. But there it goes. It's kind of good, man. But yeah, I just want to put those options in because uh, it's very, very cool, man. So that's some of the best pet gear you can use in the game right there. It's very, very nice, man. There's a few others as well, like the Holy Icon Shield, which is pretty sweet as well. On block, you can basically summon out packers that are short of uh, Holy Bubbles, I believe it is as well. But yeah, there's quite a few options. But for my particular set, this is what I use. And... Um, I've had a lot of success with it. Let me quickly go back to my good old goosey. All right, guys, so that's the other uh, gearing options out. So let's go over to skills now. To the skills, okay, guys, precision skills. You only have two precision skills, okay, on this particular setup. Okay, now, uh, of course, target strikes. Because we're getting an extra two points for free, we only need eight points in here to achieve tier three bonus, okay? So, uh, each sexual uh, six if you hit the volley now deals 25% more damage for tier one, 30% extra ammo recharge rate for tier two, and every third target strikes fires larger arrows that deal double damage. This thing absolutely shreds through monsters so, so quickly. And uh, you can see here, we don't have to have tier 10. We don't have to have 10 points here. We can just have eight points in here, and boom, get the maximum bonus because of our options from gear. Brilliant. Also, guys, for reload, all you need is uh, four points in there, man. Okay, just need four points. Tier 1 bonus, reload reduces ammo cost by 25%, 25% for 6 seconds. And Tier 2, 30% damage for precision skills, okay? You can go for Tier 3, but personally, I don't think it's worth it. Just go to Tier 2, and uh, and boom, you're easy, man. Okay, guys, over to Bane skills. Now, on Bane, guys, the first thing you want to do, man, is get Mizma maxed out, okay? Get Mizma's maxed out. As soon as it's available, max this out straight away, because this is how you basically keep all your damage reduction up in the game and make your pets actually do damage, okay? So max this out definitely first. Uh, definitely do Energizer as well, as soon as possible, guys. Become more tuned to your Relic. Increase your Relic Energy Recharge Rate as well by 25%. Puppet Master buffs all your minion damage by 25%. For the, uh, I reckon Assault, guys, to be honest, I only went to Tier 1, because I found Tier 2 and Tier 3 wasn't really that good but tier one basically gives you a massive spider queen and that spider queen will wreck once it gets on top of an enemy in melee combat it's really really hard if you do pump more points into this skill they will make the actual uh, spider queen hit harder but i found the other points were better elsewhere in the build nice uh also guys i've put spread of death into this build as well this is optional it's completely up to you want to put this in uh, chance to spawn poison bolts when you quickly hit a poison enemy, 5% chance, chance of the time. And then when you kill a target, 20% chance of they can explode in a big area with your poison bolts as well. I do believe the first part there, guys, chance to spawn poison bolts when you quickly hit a poison enemy, I think that's actually broken at the moment. So when the next patch drops, which I think is due in December at the time of this video, uh, then this should be fixed and it will be doing even more DPS, which is great. But hey guys, last but not least, of course, is eight-legged allies, okay? And I've got this up to tier four because I've got all the spare points from using the Musketeer Helm and chest plate. I've got this to tier four, it's just one point out from top. And uh, all spinal damage is increased by 20% and I can summon an extra four spiders by a poison and an enemy. Brilliant. So nice, man. Then guys, on adventurous skills, nice and easy. First thing you're going to do, guys, on this, man, is definitely get scouts, bows. Stack this up all the way up to the top, man. All the way up to the top. Some of the ancient rat spirit swarm that moves slowly, piercing targets for 174 weapon damage, and leaves them poisoned for another 87 weapon damage for two seconds, okay? So when they're poisoned, you'll be procking your free smiders from a legged eyes for free, because that's how they spawn when they're poisoned from a target. Well, you can always do it if you've got poison on your weapon as well. Poison duration. Brilliant. So, uh, Scout Bones now gives an extra stack of precision skill buff, a tier 2, 10, 10, an extra 10% critical crit chance for precision skill as well, which is just fantastic. And then Scout's Bones now fires three balls of rats, okay? Now, these balls of rats will go through multiple targets, okay? See those balls of rats there? They'll just go through loads of targets and they cause tons and tons of damage, okay? Now, when you pair that, in the Legendarium with the Infectious Shooter. Basically, guys, this is like Kano's King from Diablo. Scout Bones now fires off poison missiles around it that do 50% weapon damage each. Okay, so so you got a big, big boss, yeah? So this dude is a big, big boss. You fire that off, it's going through that target. All those poison bolts are spamming out and hitting that target for multiple damage. It absolutely wrecks. And it's really good for smashing all the breakables up on the screen as well. So you can get even more gold and loot as well on top. It's very, very nice skill. I love that skill so much, man. 
satisfied to watch it go off. It's on a short cooldown as well. Brilliant. Okay, guys, uh, obviously key to the build is Goblin Legion. Basically, this is your main pet skill, okay? Goblin Legion, okay? So, uh, summon two ghostly goblins. This is slave to you two in a ring required to deal 44 weapon damage with a lifespan of 30 seconds. Because we've got reload in this build, you can keep these guys up permanently. Okay, you can have, you just hit this, you just hit reload, and wallop, you can recast Goblin Legion straight away. Straight away, which is great. So, uh, tier 1 bonus, 12 seconds, increased life bands for Goblins, doesn't really matter because we keep them up. 65% damage for your pet. Now, it's not for Goblin pets, it's actually your main core pet, okay, which is kind of strange, but still nice. And then tier 3, Goblin Legion now summons a ghostly Goblin Brew who deals 75% of your weapon damage, okay. So, if I quickly cast this now, key 6, boom, you get this big boy here, okay. Now, if we hit reload now, you can recast it straight again. And we've got another one. <laughs> we've got another one. So uh, pretty much, guys, as soon as reload is up, you can just recycle basically Sastra and the Goblin Legion straight away. And now we can just go like that and bang. And now we've got three Goblin Brutes and all these other little dudes on top as well. So pretty much you can keep Goblin Legion up permanently in this build just because we've got it up and reload. It's very, very cool, man. Very, very cool. Okay, guys, so uh, you only need one point in Ghost Visage, okay? But um, that's because we've got an extra two points for free. So basically, we get access to Ghost Visage, which gains an additional charge. Now, this skill is absolutely strong as hell in this game. It is so, so strong, because uh, dropping Spirit... Basically, it's like Spirit Walk on the Witch Doctor, guys, in Diablo 3, okay? So basically, you're completely invulnerable for damage for six seconds. Which is just crazy. You just go like this. It's a little teleport like this. You can run around while you're joining us here. And then six seconds, you can't die. You can walk through all the monsters and everything. So when you're doing a mission, you can complete the mission and then just stuff through the rest of the map and go straight to the boss fight. It's absolutely crazy strong. I've got a feeling it's going to get nerfed personally, but it's very, very good. Very, very good. And uh, yeah, you get an extra charge as well. So I've got three charges, like three teleports and I'm out. If you want to recharge it, just hit reload. Bang, hit reload. I and mean, now we've got another... Another free teleports. <laughs> it's an absolutely brilliant survival skill. So the one of the worst effects in the game is actually Siege. So if you see Siege about to crush your head, you can literally just go pop and nothing can touch you for six seconds. It is an unbelievably strong skill. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant skill. It's probably gonna get left. Okay, guys, next guys is Sacrifice the Goose. This is uh this is a skill that you can change out for anything you want, okay? Okay, but I, I do suggest using Goosey, because uh Basically, because we've got extra points into this, uh, it does a 30% damage vulnerability on that target for 6 seconds. But because we've got tier 1 as well, you get an extra 20% on top, so it's a 50% damage buff, guys. Which is brilliant. So, uh, just go like this, bang! And that's it, they're going to take an extra 50% damage for 6 seconds, and then you just, just unload. Also gives you some AoE fire arrows as well for 3 or 4 shots as well on top, which is kind of cool. But um, yeah, but like I said, you can change this out to anything you want if you want to. Man, like like earlier we showed those pets in action from the summoned sword, things like that. But this damage spike from this thing is just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I found the other tier two and tier three bonuses not really worth it. But if you want to, you can spec that guys with the extra points from the build. Like I said earlier, you can if you want to, you can drop spread of death and a few points from your allies to buff this skilled way to the top if you want to. It's up to you, man. But just one point, you know, one point to have an extra 50% damage buff is massive. Then, guys, last but not least, man, this thing here, Loyal Shasha, the, wolf, the ghostly wolf summon is just brilliant. Summon the spirit of your best friend, Shasha, who deals 441% weapon damage, gain up to five stacks of a 10% damage buff whenever you or she is struck by enemies, okay? Additionally, Shasha taunts enemies every eight seconds, okay? And because of reload in this build, you can have this up all the time in your build. It's so good. So, uh, let's read out tier bonuses. Uh, tier 1 bonus, 12 seconds, increased summon duration for Shastra. It doesn't really worry, you know. Tier 2, 50 percent increased damage to taunted enemies. Basically, this mob will, this uh, pet will taunt an enemy. And when it does, you get a 50% increased damage bonus. So, you, when you stack that with uh, Goose, sacrifice the Goose as well on top, it's 100% plus, you know. And plus, it's got that stack of one on top of this thing as well. So, it's a great amp. It's great. Then, tier 3, uh, Shasha now has a burning area around her, dealing 50% weapon damage as well on top, which is sick. So, uh, if we quickly cast this now. So, um, basically, let's say you're engaged in an elite pack, yeah, or a boss, something like that. Just cast Shastra right next to that dude straight away. Because, um, the Shasha will do a little howl. Do you see the debuff on the target go off? You see the little icon on the target go off, and then immediately just drop sacrifice the goose on top, 
and there you go, 100% damage. Doesn't just unload. <laughs> just unload, man. Just unload and watch that target die. But yeah, uh, Setra also has an AoE uh, aura as well, and she taunts enemies off you, so it just keeps you alive, man. That taunt is great. Originally, I didn't have this at very high, but I did max her out in the end, and uh, I'm glad I did, because that's a lot of damage. Like, a lot of damage, man. Love that pet. It's great. Brilliant. Okay, then. So, uh, we'll go to the giant guy sitting in this build. I'm using the Rifle of Leadership. Goblin Legion now summons three ghostly gunners as well. So, we get three little gunners on top as well. Then Shasta's Promise. Lord Shasta deals 100% more damage as well. She's already done a lot of damage to the but she does even more now. And also heals you for 10% of your health when she does a taunt as well. Now, because we can recast this extremely quickly, you can get that heal off going off all the time, which is great. And then last of these guys, of course, infectious shoot. This thing is just so much damage. Scout bones fires off poison missiles around you. That does 50 weapon damage each. If you guys are doing legendary farming or unique maps and things like that, so the unique effects on a map, what you can do, just change rifle leech out to anything that gives you basically an MF buff, like I said, shown on the last video that I did for Torchlight 3. So for instance, say you're... Uh, I don't know, you're killing, uh, where's the, where is that? There you go. So, say so you're killing loads of hybrids, you can swap out rifle leadership and put on Skittering Chestplate and then gain like a adventure to gain yourself more RMF. You can do this for goblins as well, automatations, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So, that's what I tend to do when I'm doing MF runs. But if I'm hard, you know, doing a big push, then I will use a rifle leadership because those three get your ghost scudders. The more pets, the better, basically, guys, because you can zerg it up. <laughs> it's great. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've been using, man. And it's been working very, very well. The one thing left to do, guys, is the pet skills. Now, when you're pushing endgame, you've got to stack your defense. Don't just go glass cannon. You will die. And if you're using lifebound gear like I am with my current gun, you know, it's very important to stay alive. So for pet skills, guys, I'm using Aura Defender. Pets grants 25% defense to nearby allies. You can only have one aura effect at any time. So this this really saves you. Sometimes you get hit by a plague bearer, poison explosion, sea, things like that. Most of the time you can just about survive it. Okay, just about survive it. It's tricky there, but or don't just to get hit. Use that teleport skill. Use Ghost for Charge to get out of the way. But this will save you massively if you're doing lower content you can just change this over to like the speed or the crit one if you want to also guys always have healing friendship odds as well effective allies will cover 50 percent health cooldown of 30 seconds and then defensive posture all allies gain 25 percent damage resistance for 10 seconds as well cooldown of 30 seconds the last one of these guys causes battle cry all allies gain 25 percent increased damage for 10 seconds now because of this pet relic here not relic sorry uh legendary item man this one here, Token of Invigoration, on pets hits, 10% chance refresh cooldowns of pets' active skills. So basically, there's a 10% chance that your pet can just heal you straight away again, give you that Berserker Fury, etc, etc. This thing is gold, absolute gold, because it will give you damage, healing, and defense, if you spent it the way I've done it on this thing. And it works really, really good. Nice, man. Well, right, guys, so uh, I've got a little bit of action uh, coming up now, so uh, I'll show you this build in action, and uh, here we go, man, here we go. Hey! Okay, guys, rotations, man. So this was uh, difficulty 193. 193. Okay, guys, so super, super easy, man. So, uh, yeah, first thing you need to do, you need to get Mismer up, okay? So the best way to get Mismer up is just cast Scout's Bones into a load of mobs. <laughs> okay? And uh, you can see it already going off already. And, uh, yeah, as long as you're in, in combat, guys, you're always going to be generating Relic Energy for your Mismer, okay? If Mismer ever drops, that's when you're going to be in trouble, man. We can see the damage numbers coming off from Scout's bows there, it's crazy. So what I'm doing now, I'm just like basically, just, I'm still on a little uh, unique hunt here, so I'm just looking for unique mobs right now. But I thought I'll quickly show you guys the rotation. But the rotation is super easy, man, so basically what I'm trying to do is uh, find a unique hide, a unique uh, mob, sorry. And, um, yeah, first thing I do is I cast all my pets around the unique uh, mob, okay. I think there's one coming up around here in a second, actually. Yeah, there you go. But typically, man, it blows my stuff off, off cooldown. I'll cast all my pets right on top of that elite pack, okay? So hopefully the Spider Queen's on top of it as well. Uh, your Shasha Doctor taunts it, and it does the damage buff. All your goblins. You have so much off-tanking from pets in this build, it's great. And then I'll cast Sacrifice the Goose on the elite pack. Then I'll cast Scout's Bones, and then just hold down target strikes and watch it just melt. <laughs> and so, look at this guy dead, and bang! <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. But roughly, guys, this build is roughly 50% pet DPS and 50% archery damage. And it just works really well. High tanking, got tons of teleports, you know. Obviously, you can't super tank on this build because it's not really designed that way. But um, you've got enough survivability to do the endgame content, okay? Remember, don't neglect your resistances on your character. 
Make sure you've got a bit of everything, you know, fire, poison, electric, and obviously core defense as well to stack up your HP. But yeah, remember, if you ever get caught in a bad spot, okay, teleport. Just hit Ghost Village. Just hit that teleport and don't click any other skill because you'll be immune for all damage for six seconds. So if you get to that point where you're like, oh my god, you're on like 10% health, you just hit that. Just wait for your potion call to come back up. Bang, hit that potion and you're good. There we go. Smashing, man, smashing. I'm very close to the end game. I think the highest level you can go is 252, I think. But yeah. It's nice, I guess. Nice chill build. Like I said, there's lots of off tanking from all the pets. Another leap, another leap down already. It's nice, man. It's nice. But I love using this build, man, because you can just teleport around. It's, it's really, really quick. You know, I can just hit reload. Just hit reload. Another pet here. We've got Spider Queen up now. Bang! There's Spider Queen. There's the big, the big pet. This is my big pet right now. The big one. <laughs> the big pet Rex, man. Even though with tier 1 bonus. Oh yeah, if you get chased by the leap pad, guys, you know, elite or unique like that, just just you know, just hit reload, then hit Shastra. Shastra will torn that enemy off you. Then summon the rest of your legion, do your usual rotation, and uh, yeah, delete them. <laughs> just delete them then. Boom, 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 boom. And dead. Give me a loot. Give me a loot, bro. But yeah guys, like I said, man, yeah, I'm still missing my uh, musketeer gloves at the moment, so hopefully once I get those then I can when I cast uh, Arachnid Assault. I can actually summon another two ghost pets on top as well, man. I've used it in the past, but I had to take it out because I need to have uh, mismigration to my build. No little boss here. Worst mods, guys, for a monster is Siege and Plague Bearer. You know, don't tunnel vision too much. Look, pay attention to what's going underneath your feet of your character. Like, right now I'm trying to move out of there, that uh, nasty uh, pulsing thing there. But as soon as you see Siege, man, that little, uh, those little icons on the floor, just teleport out of the way. Just teleport out of the way, man, because that thing is the, the main killer in the game right there. That pack drops so quick. You get so much nice loot. Yeah, guys, so uh, check out the other Torchlight video uh, on the channel, which is uh, Legendary Farming, man. Pretty much what I'm doing here, actually. Unfortunately, this map did roll uh, MF bonus run. Nice. There you go, guys. Easy peasy, man. Easy peasy. And there you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe and share this video. Uh, put some comments below, guys. Like and, uh, like and all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Have fun. Hey. <laughs>